Her voice brought the hills to life and will always remind us of some of our more magical childhood moments. But things weren't always so rosy behind the scenes. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're having a look at the tragic and inspiring life of singer-actress Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews was born Julia Elizabeth Wells on October 1, 1935, to Barbara Ward Wells and Edward Charles Wells in England. Wartime woes brought the couple to divorce, and Julie's mother got remarried to Ted Andrews in 1943. Ted Andrews was an entertainer, and his wife joined him in entertaining the troops during World War II. Julie lived for a short time with her father until about the age of five, at which time she was sent to live with her mother and stepfather. And I know my mother wanted us to get closer, and he was a fine tenor. And so he started to give me some singing lessons, and I think to his and my mother's surprise, they discovered I had this kind of freak, four-octave voice. She wasn't very enamored with her stepfather, and took offense to her mother insisting she refer to him as Pop. Julie's living situation was less than ideal in her adolescence, as the family lived in a slum area of London and were impoverished. She has referred to this as a black period in her life, describing her stepfather as an aggressive alcoholic who tried to get into bed with her on two occasions. You grew up in a turbulent household of alcoholism, anger, mm -hmm. uncertainty. And despair on my mum's part. This resulted in her installing a lock on her bedroom door. In 1945, when she was around the age of 10, Julie began to join her mother and stepfather on stage. She slept in the afternoons in order to be awake for evening performances. She subsequently began to perform solo, becoming her family's main support for a time. All while helping to raise her younger siblings, Julie had to perform up to two shows per evening in halls filled with smoke and alcohol. This is uh, Julie's mother, mother. Don't you dare complain about anything. Not the cigarette smoke in the theater, not having a cold, nor waiting long hours. It won't do a thing for you and nobody cares. She would attempt to liven up the gloomy dressing rooms with bunches of flowers, adding some light to her dark situation. Eventually, the careers of her mother and stepfather looked up, and the family moved to a better situation in Hersham. In 1949, at the age of 14, Julie performed at a family friend's gathering. She later had a conversation with the man of the house and claimed she felt a strange sort of connection to him. She later spoke to her mother of the experience and was told he was her real father. Her mother had had an affair with him, resulting in her conception. Julie, however, always considered Edward Charles Wells to be her father, as he had raised her and she had tremendous respect for him. Julie Andrews' talent did not go unnoticed, and despite his faults, her stepfather provided her with voice tutors and coaches. Her most notable influence was Madame Lillian Stiles Allen, who later went on to greatly praise Andrews' voice in a book the voice instructor penned. Andrews, ever the modest woman, refuted the praise. However, she did recognize that she had a clear four octave range. No, I had four octaves. I don't anymore. You've lost octaves? Yes. Oh, At what age do octaves start falling away? Well, it depends. <laughs> depends if you're a boy or a girl. From her humble beginnings on stage with her parents, she went on to perform in countless productions, eventually making her Broadway debut in The Boyfriend in 1954, followed by the coveted role of Eliza Doolittle in My Fair Lady which she originated. Warm face, warm hands, warm feet, and be loving. Her most significant early television role was in 1957 Cinderella, which was broadcast live and in which she played the titular character. In my own little corner, in my own little chair, I can be Her film career essentially began in 1964 with the well-known classic Mary Poppins, for which she won an Oscar and a Golden Globe. As I expected, Mary Poppins practically perfect in every way. Around this time, Andrews was passed over for the role of Eliza Doolittle in the film adaptation of My Fair Lady. The role went to Audrey Hepburn, whose vocal parts had to be dubbed over by ghost singer Marnie Nixon, as the actress was not a singer. I could have danced, danced, danced. Andrews 
Andrews confessed that she felt slighted by this, but because the decision allowed her to appear in the Disney classic, she was thankful in the long run. I have no intention of making a spectacle of myself, thank you. What followed was, of course, 1965's The Sound of Music, which we all know and love. I simply remember my favorite <laughs> things, and then I don't feel so bad. Andrews married Tony Walton, a set designer, in 1959. The marriage proved difficult, however, as the two were separated for long periods of time due to their respective careers. Andrews was adamant about resolving the issue, even to the point of considering giving up her own career in order to focus on her marriage. She sought the help of a therapist, who convinced her to not give up on her career, as she would be depriving the world of her incredible gift. Thankfully for us and herself, Andrews took her therapist's advice. Unfortunately, her marriage failed shortly thereafter. However, it proved to be a blessing in disguise, as one day, upon exiting the therapist's office, she bumped into writer and director Blake Edwards, who would become her second husband in 1969 and the love of her life. I'm afraid I, I was trying very hard not to fall in love with him, and that was Blake Edwards. The two were together for over 40 years and saw each other through hardships, such as the loss of Julie Andrews' vocal range. In 1997, two years after she made her big return, Andrews had to leave the Broadway production Victor Victoria when she noticed that her voice was becoming hoarse. Hiding from tomorrow, hiding from the day. She underwent surgery in New York, supposedly to remove non-cancerous nodules from her throat. She later claimed that the hoarseness was actually caused by a muscular striation on her vocal cords that was acquired during her work on the Broadway show. The surgery left her with permanent damage to her vocals, and she ended up legally pursuing the surgeons. Her four-octave range was no more and was replaced by a simple alto, albeit a fragile one. To not sing with an orchestra, to not be able to communicate through my voice, which I've done all my life, and not to be able to phrase lyrics and give people that kind of joy, uh, I think I would be totally devastated. So I am in some kind of denial. She underwent four subsequent surgeries, which were successful in enhancing her speaking voice. However, they could not restore her former singing voice. Despite all this, Andrews remained occupied in the entertainment industry, providing voiceovers in film series like Shrek and the like. Oh, stop being such a drama king. Fine! Hers is definitely an attitude to admire, as through the hardships, she has continued to emerge a strong and successful woman. In 2000, she was made a Dame Commander by Queen Elizabeth II for her contributions to the performing arts. But I think she said something like, I've been waiting a long time to see you here, or something oh. like that. And I just said, oh, your majesty. <laughs> in 2001, she appeared in Disney's The Princess Diaries as Queen Clarice Rinaldi. When walking in a crowd, one is under scrutiny all the time. So we don't schlump like this. Its 2004 sequel saw the return of the songbird in Andrews, as she performed a duet for the film. Music supervisor Don Soler said that she, quote, nailed the song on the first take, and that the film crew was in tears following the onset performance. Your love will see that it's your crowning glory, the most glorious part of you and you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Dame Julie Andrews will be 65 in 2020. Her husband of 41 years, Blake Edwards, passed away in 2010. She has one daughter from her first marriage, Emma Catherine, two stepchildren from her second, Jennifer and Jeffrey, and two daughters adopted in the 1970s, Vietnamese orphans Amy and Joanna. She has nine grandchildren and three great-grandchildren. She continued to keep busy in the 2010s, directing plays, doing speaking tours and voiceover work, most notably in the Despicable Me franchise and Aquaman. I have seen the greatest champions try and fail, but never have I sensed one as unworthy as you. In 2017, she turned down the chance to cameo in Mary Poppins Returns, citing her desire to keep Emily Blunt as the focus of the sequel's attention. 
She's truly a humble woman to this day. Most of my life I've seen the glass half full rather yeah. than half empty. And um, I've been so blessed. I mean, think about it. I'm the lucky girl that was asked to do all these wonderful things. And so how could I write, be anything but positive, you know? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.